we're now going to dip our toe into special relativity. You actually have all the math and physics background you need to understand special relativity, but somehow it's still conceptually very difficult. I think this is because in most presentations, there's these very artificial examples of a train and lightning striking at both ends. Contrived situations are dirigial. So I've really focused down and come up with a real world example that I think will help keep the discussion grounded. And now it's time for the hunter and the butterfly and the ant and the selfie stick. I will play the hunter and I'll be using my favorite gun. This is a Callahan full bore auto lock with customized trigger double cartridge thorough gauge. I call it Vera. Vera will remain still, so she's going to stay in the lab frame. Let's measure Vera's muzzle velocity since this is about uh, relative frames of motion. Let's see, so I've marked out a couple of meters here and Twenty-four meters per second. So we also have a bullet frame, and the velocity of the bullet in the lab frame is twenty-four meters per second. So now I'm going to hunt butterflies. So looking around, and oh, there's one over there. Let's see if I can come up with here. Okay, I'm lined up. Okay, Vera does not miss. Very rare that the butterfly escapes. But what happens is the ant. There is an ant on the bullet. He looks like this. Uh, and as a fellow member of the class Insecta, it's trying to help the butterfly. So the ant throws a rock at the velocity of five meters per second. And let's see, that would be the rock in the bullet frame because the ant's riding on the bullet. So this is just like the Galilean transformations we already talked about. So let's look then and see, does it make sense that the rock got there first? Let's just look at the rock motion for a second here. All right, so what we want to know is what's the velocity of the rock in the lab frame? Right? So remember, whenever we want to do that, we say rock in lab is the velocity of the rock in something plus the velocity of that something in the lab frame. And the something, of course, is the bullet frame in this case. It's the rock in the bullet plus the velocity of the bullet in the lab. These are the Galilean transformations we were just doing. So in this case, we find that, uh, let's see, rock and bullet is 5 meters per second plus bullet in the lab frame we said was 24 meters per second. So sure enough, as your intuition would tell you, since the rock was thrown at 5 meters per second from a moving bullet at 24, the moment it was thrown, it's going at 29. It's going at 29, the bullet's going at 24, so of course the rock got there first, and that's what warned the butterfly, and that's the only reason I missed. But what if the ant doesn't have a rock? Well, the ant still wants to protect the butterfly, so the ant would shout, look out! Right. And that's, of course, sound. The ant would send a sound wave towards the butterfly. So to figure out how this will work in terms of frames of reference, let's talk a little bit about sound. Sound is a wave. So we have to think a little bit about waves. You could take my class, Physics 201X, here on edX, Waves and Optics, highly recommended. Or you could just listen to what I'm going to tell you. So waves. Waves are the propagation of energy through a medium. The energy is carried through some disturbance. So in the case of sound, the disturbance is a little bit of a variation in pressure. A little bit of a pressure wave moves through the air and goes, in this case, from the ant to the butterfly. And the other thing, what we really care about, is waves move at constant speed with respect to the medium. 
Each wave is a different kind of disturbance, and each wave has its own unique medium. So as I said, sound is a pressure wave in the air. So it moves at a constant speed in the air. This velocity of sound in air is about, velocity of sound in the frame of the air, about 340 meters per second. All right. So now let's think about the relative uh, scenario. Let's look at the sound motion. Okay. And I'm putting motion in quotes because, again, sound isn't a physical object like the rock, but we can still think about how fast it's going to move. So first, let's ask ourselves, if the sound goes at 340, how fast is it really going in the lab frame? Right? So what's the velocity of sound in the lab frame? Well, our rule for the transformations is you just write velocity of sound in something plus the velocity of something um, in what you want. Okay. So in this case, we have the sound in the air. So the sound in the airframe plus the velocity of the air in the lab frame. Okay. So in the lab frame, the sound is going at 340 plus, what's the velocity in the airframe? Well, we're indoors, and there's no wind, so it's zero. Right? The air is sitting still. There's little currents here and there. But the air is basically sitting still, so it's basically zero meters per second. So the sound does go at 340 meters per second. So you can imagine if the bullet is going 24 and the sound is going at 340, then of course the sound gets there first, scares away the butterfly, and we miss yet again. An interesting question, though, is what is the velocity um, of the sound in the bullet frame? which is the same as the ant. How does the ant see this sound move forward or backwards? Let's see. Well, we follow our rule. We want the velocity of the sound in the lab frame plus the velocity of the lab in the bullet frame. OK. Uh, let's see. The velocity of the sound in the lab frame, we decided, was 340, because the air in the lab are the same thing. OK. What's the velocity of the lab in the bullet frame? Well, bullet in the lab frame is 24 meters per second. We define 24 as positive this way. But you really got to imagine you're in the bullet frame. What do you see? You see the lab moving back. So you actually subtract 24 meters per second. It's negative 24 meters per second. So we get, what do we get? 316 meters per second. So even though we think of sound as going at 340, this ant, since it's moving, and since the, the sound moves with respect to the air, it actually sees the sound go a little bit slower in this direction. Might see it faster in that direction, but slower, slower this way. So that's what the uh, ant would do if it didn't have a rock. 